What's interesting is over $300,000 of that money was statewide outside of my congressional district. In fact, those ads are still running. My race ended Tuesday, and APAC is still running ads against me statewide, which is political malpractice, political campaign malpractice, because it's going to elevate my name ID in two years from now. Nobody's going to remember what the ads were about. What's, what's more is a super PAC associated with Senator Rand Paul has matched APAC penny for penny statewide on their ads. That, so uh, Protect Freedom PAC is running positive ads for me statewide. The net result is outside of my congressional district, even though any race statewide would be at least two years from now, there's been $650,000 of spending elevating my name ID statewide. Mm -hmm. So thank you, APAC. Did you co-sponsor the Federal Reserve Board Abolition Act? Can you talk about the importance of bringing that issue back, which most people, especially here at the Libertarian Convention, learned about through Ron Paul? Yeah, I joke that it's like the McRib. It's coming back, uh, whether you like it or not. Um, and the last time it was introduced was by Paul Brown. There were only two co-sponsors, myself and Ted Yoho. And I'm the only remaining member of Congress who sponsored it when Ron Paul was in the House of Representatives. What's, what's fascinating to me is that uh, 10 years ago, we got three co-sponsors on this bill. It, you know, spent two years getting co-sponsors and got three. Uh, this time, but right coincident with the introduction of the bill, I have two dozen co-sponsors. So what's happened since Ron Paul introduced the bill, last introduced the bill 10 years ago and now? Well, you've seen an erosion of trust in institutions. We all know FBI, CDC, uh, FDA, these institutions, DOJ, institutions which used to have a level of trust, probably misplaced trust, but some level of trust among Americans has been eroded from what we've the things that we've learned. Um, and so also the things that Ron Paul were predicting have come true. We've got massive inflation. Just in four years we've seen 25 percent of the dollar evaporate. That's all enabled by the Federal Reserve. Yes, Congress is to blame as well, but we couldn't get away with that. We couldn't have monetized our debt during COVID without the Federal Reserve. And so that's why the time has come to reintroduce that, and I think that's why we see 10 times as much support in Congress for the bill to abolish the Federal Reserve. Just a quick follow-up on that related issue, the concern about central bank digital currencies. Obviously, you're raising awareness on this concern, and there are, uh, you know, the public worried about programmable money and how they might be, you know, just used against them in certain ways for their beliefs. What are your thoughts on how the people, obviously you're fighting from within um, the system, what the people on the street level who are worried about this can do to raise awareness? or to push back? There will be attempts to legalize central bank digital currency in Congress. And some of these are going to be sneak attacks. We've got to remain vigilant to make sure they don't slip these into other bills. The, the Fed can't yet do a full-blown central bank digital currency without some kind of authorization for Congress. Even they acknowledge that. But they're doing some test runs for it. And you're seeing some pushback at state levels against these test runs. Um, but, I, you know, given what I've observed from government, they're probably more likely to use the big banks that they've enriched as sort of the, the central bank digital currency enablers and enactors. And so we've got to be vigilant there as well.